Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. I'm Mark Walker and today we're going to look at the game Under the Jolly Roger, which really reminded me of something like Sid Meier's Pirates from way back in the day, if you remember that. Let's be honest though, we've had a few pretenders over the years and it could quite easily be absolutely terrible. Is this one full sail or half mast? Let's find out. As far as story goes, you begin your tale sailing upon the high seas. All is well until a battle breaks out. Your crew are utterly devastated by a kraken, leaving them dead, dispersed, and your ship in pieces. And from a pirate port, you'll begin your tale aboard a lowly schooner. Sure, it's quick, but it does not pack a punch. Story missions are delivered through text, which is written in your journal and you can acquire new missions at any of the ports you visit, depending that is on your relationship with the faction who control it. Early story missions simply act as a tutorial to guide you through the many systems in the game, but the writing for the most part is decent, and there are several events that take place on your ship like hauntings and the sightings of sea beasts, which will pop up from time to time and served well to keep the atmosphere going. It would have been perhaps nice if you saw some of the other captains or the people giving you the quests, as these are only delivered via text, much of the storytelling is going to take place in your imagination. However, they do span over several different islands, and usually over the course of a story mission there are plot twists and other exciting events that take place. In terms of the gameplay and controls, I'm going to try and make this as simple as I can, as it's one of those more complex titles. Now first things first, you can control and sail the ship using the left stick. You'll adjust the sails by pressing the Y button. You can either have them completely down, at half sail or full sail, and this then affects the speed you're moving. You'll see the wind direction and you'll have to use that as well. While this system's okay, in practicality they really should have assigned these to two separate buttons, one increasing your sails and one decreasing, as you'll very often find yourself having to stop suddenly and you'll have to cycle through all these three settings. A minor design choice and I think one that they should possibly consider implementing in the future. You control the camera using the right stick, but you can also pan all the way in so that you're in a first person perspective and sail from this view which is really nice. The whole game, whenever you see the ship, you're actually able to sail absolutely anywhere on the overworld map. And it was quite liberating zooming all the way in and just using the map to sail around at a more leisurely pace. However, in practical terms, most of your sailing is going to take place from the map. This screen allows you to track quests which are shown with green areas or other markers and by pressing the right trigger you'll then be able to look into your journal and see exactly which factions you're fighting for. Now there are several factions in the game and your standing with each will vary depending on your actions and the missions that you undertake but you won't be able to undertake missions if your rating is too low. Yep, exactly like you remember from Sid Meier's. I guess the next main question you're thinking is how's the combat? Well, the combat's very good. Early in the game, you don't really have many items at your disposal, and I was getting a bit worried about the lack of information. But once you've got the spyglass accessible through an early tutorial, then you can look at other enemy ships, which will show you the crew status, the hull status, as well as the sails. It was at this point that I became Mark Blackbeard, as I was able to switch to the bar shots, and my crew were quite well trained, decimate their sails, no matter how big they were, hide in their blind spot, pepper the crew with shrapnel and then jump aboard and what I wasn't expecting was a fully 3D realistic real-time simulation of boarding. Dependent on the amount of crew you've assigned to the boarding mission you'll be given a percentage success rate but obviously you can massively influence that if you're smart with where you place your character. I'm not gonna lie boarding combat is a little bit janky, the movement's clunky, the attack and defense are very simplistic, but I also loved it. It's taking place in real time. So if there are enemy ships still about, you'll see them going past. They might fire upon you to try and deter the attack. And once hopefully you're successful, you'll be given three choices. You can use that ship to repair your own quickly, take all of the crew and make them work for you, or, yep, you can capture that ship, send it back to port and keep it as a trophy. This then means you can return to port, change to that if you so choose, or sell it on at a very high price. There are many different ammunition types you can use when fighting on the high seas, from bar shots to chain shots, shrapnel, and even getting strategic by using flaming ammunition to set their sails on fire. Where under the Jolly Roger separates itself from some of the competition is by embracing a touch of magic. It's not completely overdone, it basically means you can find these rare artifacts which will allow you to call in special abilities at certain times. These have a cooldown and they're shown in the corner of your screen, 
but they can be quite useful in a pinch. One very cool aspect that I think you'll enjoy is the legendary status. So as you go throughout the game, you'll gain certain characteristics. And this is shown on your journal screen, things such as the spider, which basically means you're a player that goes in and paralyzes your enemy and then kills them from the shadows, which is pretty awesome. And it meant that the morale of the people you're facing changes and they're less willing to fight or they might run away more often. If you're more of a lover rather than a fighter, then you can become a trader. You can distribute your goods between warehouses, ports, and every time you find a new item in the world, it will be logged on a screen so that you can reference back later if there's a specific order you need to fill out. And a green percentage indicator means that that port has a 10% discount, while a red one will show a 15% hike in prices and the perfect place to sell those wares. You can change factions at any time, but you'll also need to purchase the necessary flag so that you can be shown as an ally. The world itself takes place over at least three large maps, and as you sail along, battles and other opportunities will flash up on the screen, giving you a short time to take part. But it's important to note that at any time, you can go back to the high seas and just sail manually. In terms of negatives, I'd say the game's a touch clunky. It's gonna take you a few hours to get to grips with all of the different mechanics on offer, and even the arrangement of your crew or adding guns to your ship, it's not overtly explained after a brief initial tutorial. And a good amount of the overall discovery is left up to the player. Thankfully, what I will say though, is it seems to me to be very worth discovering. In your first couple of hours, you may be frustrated by the difficulty, and I'm not gonna lie, there's a good chance you're gonna be sunk a fair few times. But after a particularly tough battle, barely taking over a larger frigate by the skin of my teeth and buying a few new cannons, all of a sudden the tide totally turned. In summary then, the combat's good. I enjoyed the trading. It felt like there could have been a touch more depth in this area, but it still gets deeper as you progress. There are several large maps to explore and tons of factions and unique items to find, including obviously hidden treasure. The controls are fine. It feels very much like the Assassin's Creed sailing and the ability to zoom all the way in is a nice touch. There are a couple of tweaks I would have made and there really aren't many options for the player to tweak other than to turn off the ridiculous default option of auto shooting when you reach max percentage. It's terrible. If you get the game, make sure you switch that off straight away. There aren't any touch controls, which is a shame as I've enjoyed playing this one in handheld. Overall, this is really my type of game. You need to know what you're getting into. It is slightly slower paced at times, and it's also a touch tough. If you are a Sid Meier's fan, I think you're gonna get a lot out of it, but it's not as good as that series. Gameplay is hugely addictive, it scores 17 out of 20, and the controls score 15 out of 20. In terms of the visuals and performance, well, the game is running at around about 30 to 40 frames per second at all times. Very rarely does it dip below that. However, when you're fighting on board enemy ships, it will drop down. At all other times though, it's quite smooth and even climbs as high as 60 FPS. There are gonna be a few of you that say, well, they should have just capped it out at 30. And yeah, they should have. It does feel like they've got adaptive V-Sync here. If you know what that is, it's where it locks out at 60 when it can and when it can't, it will lock out at 40 and then 30 and it keeps things feeling quite smooth without any of the tearing and artifacts that you get with that. Aesthetically speaking, I'd say the game's not the prettiest. There are rough edges, lots of aliasing on the edges of sails and things like that. But the ability to zoom right in and see everything's very cool and being able to board or attack forts and land, I like that. There's quite a bit more here than initially meets the eye. Some of the scenery is quite interesting, but there's a touch of fog here and there and some particularly muddy textures. The most important area, the ships, are very well designed and you have the ability to customize this by purchasing different sail types, flags, etc. Although some of the options are a bit unusual, like Spider-Man sails, which just seem totally out of keeping with the rest of the game. In terms of the audio, the music of the overworld map's lovely. There's a really nice melody that plays throughout most of your experience and it doesn't really get repetitive. And the combat music's decent, it's quite generic, but it does the job. But for me, the area that I miss here, which is strange as it comes from Assassin's Creed, are things like sea shanties. I think they've really added something to the sailing in that title. And perhaps some form of narration or voice dialogue between characters would have added a little bit to the experience. The visuals and performance are okay. I did have one crash in my playtime, but the game also auto saves, so I didn't lose any progress. They score 15 out of 20. An audio also scores 15 out of 20. 
Now at £12.95 currently on sale under the Jolly Roger is a bloody bargain. There's potentially hundreds of hours of play here, loads of different missions to undertake and an open world pirate RPG on the high seas with trading, real time combat, boarding, tons of different factions and loads of different ships to find. It's really very good value. It has an RRP of around about £16 which seems about right but at its current sale price this is a bargain and I wouldn't expect to see a physical on this one at least for a while. You're looking at a 1.2 gig download so it's not the biggest game and overall I give value 19 out of 20. Overall I enjoyed Under the Jolly Roger, it's not particularly slick and it has clunkier aspects but its core gameplay and the way it executes it led to an overall very enjoyable experience. It gets a switch up score of 81%. Please let us know down in the comments if you're going to be picking this one up, if it's your type of game or if you absolutely hate, well, I don't know, pirates? A big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month and as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!